I was I hijacked the meeting. Be done by now. <laughs> All right. So what? Sean and I are going to go off and have our own little meeting here today. <laughs> That's cool. Just don't use this Zoom link. <laughs> Just do keep it off. Um. Thanks, guys, for joining another crazy Tuesday. A uh, little tight group today. With um, we will kind of leave it open for any questions. Um, we do have a deal from Peter, which I actually, I think this deal could take a good amount of time. Not a good amount of time, but I feel like there's a lot of moving parts here. So this deal is something that we can definitely dive into. Uh, well, that which, deal is actually from Benjamin Patterson, who is in the house. Cool. So funny enough, I got this deal sent to me on September 21st, 12 days ago. So you I know actually, who, uh, you know who sent another, it to you? Actually, a mutual friend of ours sent me the referral from to another agent. Okay. Um, so Benjamin, I'm gonna let you, actually ask you this one. Do you know the who's the person that sent you the deal? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Um, so it's a, a broker relationship. So he uh knows that we are trying to so uh, allocate a couple of funds or trying to just find a good deal. He he told us pretty much that the sellers had a couple of offers open um, at his price of about 27 to 28 million. But out of the four people who have presented an offer, he's even gotten one to escrow. Nobody's been able to close. And so um, I was actually dealing with something on the South side of Atlanta, Southwest side of Atlanta. It was about 250 units. And uh, my broker said, Hey, look at this one. Cause I think the guy is now willing to negotiate it down in the 22 to 24 million range. Right. Um, and I was like, I, I mean, it's in Albany. I'm not trying to, you know, allocate any of my time or my property managers into that space. But then I was like, you know, it might be something. Um, so when I, as I started looking at it, they started telling me he's also open to owner financing at this point. Um, I think he's, we were talking about um, at 1.8 million down. Uh, I talked to him. I said, hey, I'm, I'm like, I'm not even interested at that at that point. He got it down to 5 million. And I was like, okay, let me start seeing if I can underwrite it and um, send it to a couple people to underwrite and look at. Um, again, because I know it's probably been sent out to other people, uh, all these other things, but it kind of passed that that point not, or enough for me to look at it when he started to say, OK, I'll bring it down to these numbers. And I'm like, OK, maybe the other people who received this hasn't received the OK at these numbers, such as the full purchase of 22 to 24 million. And uh, on the owner financing side, you know, start starting to talk about the four to five million down payment price. So that's oh kind of where I'm at right now. I've under I've tried to I've underwrote it a couple of times in a couple of ways. And at this point, I'm just trying to see like, hey, at what point would I need to acquire it? Because I've already kind of got a business plan started on what I would want to do with it. But it's just right now, uh, it's a little fuzzy on like, you know, the area and just, you know, just different things like that. Just the underwriting process. So that's really it. So here's the initial questions I have. Is there a someone balloon on this? Uh, I think so. Hold on real quick. Let me see. I pretty... My understanding on this one, I uh -huh. don't think there is. Um, yeah, I don't my... think there is either. Hold on real quick. Uh, or go ahead. Go ahead. Keep doing. I'm looking it up. Actually, the perfect person possible to get online right now actually came in at the perfect time. That's amazing. Um, Because I do believe there needs to be new debt. Jerry, we have a question for you. Wait, he's not even connected. I'm jumping the gun a little bit here. It sounds um, like the seller financing, though. True, but you have to come up with the LTV. You have to make up the difference on the LTV and, and the carry of $17 million. Jerry, you're on an amazing time. Um, it's like you almost heard us uh, calling for you without even actually saying your name. Um, <laughs> so we have a deal here that um, Benjamin and uh, Peter have shared with us, but we need new debt. Um, Benjamin, can you, um, I, I, and so for my underwriting, I initially have underwritten this deal already. Right. I put 8% because I wasn't sure, um, just in regards to one, the condition two, I didn't dive that far into the numbers. I did look a little right. into them, but I kind of got to a point where I felt like the interest rate was going to kind of take this off the table, but I didn't know there was a seller carry component to it either. So that's also right. a fact. Um, do you know, I know there's, I don't want to go through every single part of it right now myself and try to like summarize it. Is, do you have like a summary at all in regards to what this property is like to give us more context, Benjamin? Uh, and, and what kind of context are you asking 
on what what's it's like. What's the value add? What's the play on this? Why are they selling? Clearly, they um, it a couple times if they're trying to, uh, they've kept having to list it. So their motivation seems to be there. Uh, so I, I don't know this too deep, but I just know, again, that he has tried to sell it more, uh, four times concrete that he sent to me. Uh, they've kind of taken a screenshot of like the different times he's tried to sell it, you know, of different conversations. Um, I know he's tried to sell it four times. One time got to escrow. Uh, at this point, he's just trying to get out the multifamily space um, because, you know, it's just a little too hectic and get get into, you know, triple net properties and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I am just looking at the value play of finishing up the renovations that he started. He's renovated uh, the 407 units. He's renovated, I think uh, it was 70 of them. I think it was 170 of them. Um, and so the rest are still classic or le or you know, even less than that. And they're uh, not looking uh, great. Do you have a CAC, sorry, cap X mm -hmm. uh, estimate for it? I had put five thousand a unit for the three. Wait, am I right? That's exactly what I got. Three twenty? No, it's not three twenty. It's bigger. It's four oh seven. Am I looking at the right property that I underwrote? Let me see. I might not be. Oh, well, well, here's the part. I think they did add. Well, when, when did you get sent this property? Uh, September 21st, but I've seen it before once. Oh, here it is. Wait, I have all oh. the rentals. All right, I'm confused. I don't know if I've actually underwritten this. I thought I did, but maybe not. But we can do it anyway. It's not a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. so let me do this. Because I thought it was the two properties that I have here. Um, Jeez. Yeah, because I know these names. I for sure have gotten this. I just don't think I ever under it, wrote it. Yeah, interesting. Right. Whoopsie. 4.2 4 in CapEx to date, looking like $530,000 in CapEx needed. <clears throat> As of this March, I don't know if they've put anything since then. Where are you right, looking? Which I was are you looking wasn't even that Albany 407 CapEx. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Upgrade, partial upgrade, standard, uh, exterior, or oh, needed. So they're asking that's too low. Partial upgrade. I don't, uh, again, I, I don't know what the before and after looks like. I feel like that's very low. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what I was they've saying. Up, also. They've upgraded 156. Well, they've upgraded 236 of the 407. And you're finishing off the remaining 168. What is that? Uh, 438. 438, 600 divided by 168. Uh, Twenty six hundred dollars is very low, right? Like where well, I was thinking double that to be fair. So let's call. That, I was I was saying about one point. I said one point two to one point five, uh, between all of it, because he was even saying um compared to these numbers, really, I I was thinking that only about one hundred and seventy one really finished with the renovations. Um, that's what I was um uh, when I was talking to the owner and the other ones and uh the broker that was sending it to me. Um. But yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going by these numbers, yeah, about a million, about a million to one point two. Sounds like ten thousand per unit for a full rehab. Well, they have a ninety five for the exterior, which scares me again because if they've undershot the interior by this much, they may be really off on the exterior. So I guess you know, five. well, I don't, I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna hit that ten thousand per unit point. Uh, I, I don't see them putting in. I don't, I don't think they put in even granite or anything like that. That was too excessive. I think it can pull off with that. Um, uh, at the most six, six grand per unit. I think they can pull that off. But again, that's just for the interior, by the way. Um, I, I that's my opinion. So here's one on more thing. So here's one more thing. Keep in mind with the capex the way it's listed here. Do we know when the roofs are changed? How many roofs do they have? The pool, mm. oh, that um, scares me always. There's a there's a detail. There's a detail of like per per um yeah one. So you can see the exterior. There's one with all roofs replaced. Because <clears throat> from my yeah from my memory, this was a lot of buildings. 
So here's a question. So we can, uh, Jerry could get your opinion on this if you have uh, the ability to unmute. Um, where are you seeing LTVs around in regards to, because my initial thought is it's not even about the deal. It's how much capital do I need? Ballpark. Because one thing that's not going to change is the amount of capital I need. Interest rates, that's like, let's cross that bridge and get there, I should say. Yeah, what is the... Um... What is the current NOI? Is there is there people? I mean, is the whole place need uh, renovated, or is there is there people in there, or what's going on with it? Yeah, oh. I, I think it's um it, they've got it over there. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me pull just up under a million. Just Sorry? Under, say that again. Yeah. yeah, just under a million in NOI, seventy seven percent occupied. It looks like. Correct. Okay. And so, what are they expecting the uh, NOI to be once it's stabilized? 2.2 <laughs> which is which is super aggressive uh, which yeah. is i think it was overshooting how That's many units 407 it's units okay and those, those are from the om correct those numbers uh it's from the email oh yeah, yeah their 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 strategy on the email yeah the om is uh i think that's an old one that's an old from when you put it up with a broker um i think it's from like 2021 oh geez that's yeah so that's just so, really for the images that's what i was using now yeah so he has um, it right here after completion at 22 current at 996 total value i don't know i've leased up to 93 zero lost lease i don't ever like on direct so this is a good little exercise to kind of see like hey this is what they told us how do we kind of put that into our own assumptions? Because you never want to assume everything a broker, seller, whoever brought you the deal is correct. And you don't you want to put your own assumptions to it. I think that's a better way to put it, not saying they're lying. Yeah, just not hey, so, hey, Edward. Yeah. Hey, um, is it, I never did answer your question before, um, but just as far as, uh, you know, loan to values, I mean, that, they're kind of all over. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, that's Albany, Georgia. I mean, we're we're probably looking at a one three to one three five um, DSCR mm. that will be required to have there. Um, so when you're underwriting for um, you know bridge debt, which is what you'd have to have on this one at the beginning, um, you know your NOI, uh, your pro forma NOI, is going to have to, um, you know, that bridge debt's going to be based on that. Um, and they're going to be really conservative on the lending on it. So they're probably going to go 60, 65% loan to value. Um, hmm. And uh, just just because nobody knows where the rates are going to be a year from now or two years from now. Right. I mean, you know, there, I mean, there's a chance we could be higher than what we're at right now, two years from now. And the lender's got to underwrite to that, you know, just to that idea. Cool. Uh, ben Benjamin, by any chance, do you know the terms of the um seller carry component or what they're looking to get out of that? No, 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 no. We haven't uh deep dove into that yet. I was supposed to hop on a call with them tomorrow, actually. Uh so we could talk about it a little more. So what is the average rent and what do they expect the average rent to be when the when the pro for, when the um, stabilization occurs? Oh, I did that wrong. Um, I've got, I think I've got the pro forma average rent. So they have increased occupancy. So their occupancy is pretty low right now from what I'm seeing on here. Because you have 59, 76, 77. Uh, 16, 25, 55, average 70 side. Uh, you don't have the beginning at uh, rents in this email, just where they're going to. And well, you have a, well, you have a rent roll. Right. Yeah, yeah. One, saying, two, long. three. And this is from, yeah, this is recent. 926. Mm -hmm. 926. No, no, that's the date. Sorry. Uh, you're talking about average rent, right? That's the number you needed? Yeah. Let's mark it. What's your occupancy there? Uh, 
22 vacancies here out of 90. Wait, no, 22 out of how is how, why am I making myself? Yeah, right. The OM should have a summary, but if it's not recent, that doesn't help us. It just can be a ballpark. I'm just trying to get kind of a round number. Well, the numbers they said here, it's occupancy 77, 76, 59, which is not ideal. I don't know what the average is. You're just asking for the average rent per unit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's sitting at roughly about, like, I would say, uh, I would say 800, 800 bucks. Gotcha. Yeah, it was maybe a little lower. Maybe shooting around like seven sixty to eight hundred. How are rents in that area? I'm not too familiar with Albany. I've I've seen a few deals there, but I'm not too. Um, familiar. if you go to the um the offering memorandum, they actually I think it's the offering memorandum. They, it has it pretty pretty well laid out with like the comparables. Um, let me see what page it is. Uh, if you just scroll down, it's towards the end. Um. Hey. It's ironic because these pro formas technically could have been achieved already, and by the looks of it, they're not. So that's pretty ironic. Right, right. So the thing I did, I'm coming up with like a pro forma NOI of like 1.7 million. I got 1.6. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. I mean, we're in the same ballpark. So just mm -hmm. taking the um, average rent of 800 bucks, um, you know times number of units, 90% uh, occupancy, and then doing 50% um, expenses. And I mean, those are just really basic numbers, but that gets you, you know, an NOI between 1.6, 1.7. And mm -hmm. so at what, I mean, at a uh, stabilized cap rate, I mean, I'm not sure what the area is like, but I'm guessing probably like a seven and a half cap that's stabilized. They have they have the valuation at the bottom in the email at six and a quarter. Right. He said a six and a quarter. He said you can even push it to six. And I was just like, eh, I don't know. Well, the 10 year treasury is at like almost at 4.8 today. Mm. So your debt's going to be coming in at like 6.8 to 7.2 range. On agency. Um, and that's agency debt right now. That's that's where you'll be at. Hmm. And if you with a bridge before you uh, get to that point, doing a bridge loan, you're going to be at ten percent probably. So I mean, you know, if it's me, if I'm getting a bridge on something like that, I'm buying it at a ten cap, and uh, then it's stabilized. You got to figure it being like a seven and a half cap. Yeah, that puts that puts your value around twenty three million stabilized unless he gives right. you a deal on the seller finance yeah unless you can get a really nice deal seller financed um but even then you got to think about your exit strategy of you know once i get this stabilized you know am i wanting to exit it and then what am i going to be able to exit it at mm. because whoever buys it from you is going to have to take on agency debt and um yeah, with your NOI being, you know, one point six. Um, at twenty three million value. So you're looking at, um, you know, about fourteen to fifteen million is the most you could borrow on this with, um, you know, one point six uh, NOI. And that, that is today's interest rate. So we keep running up. I heard people on Bloomberg today talking about a uh, 5 to 7% range for the treasuries. Jesus. Uh, but, 14, yeah. So 14.6 or 14, 14, 6, that's the, the loan amount or that's what the loan amounts LTV is going to be based off of? Well, no, your um, purchase or... So if your NOI is like 1.6, your value is going to be around 23 million in today's market. So proceeds at a seven and a half cap. Yeah. So your loan proceeds will be between 14 and 15 million. Yeah, man. To get a 1.3 DSCR.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're buying right now at a what at a six gap. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like six point five. Yeah, I mean, you, or, I mean, they won't, like they won't sell it at that. <laughs> no, no, especially with all that capex needed to be. Uh, in there. Another thing I noticed on some of the rent rolls, we quickly glanced over here. They have a lot of rents, a lot uh, still going. Right. I mean, four hundred seven units. You could, I mean, it could be a nice deal, uh, but you know, you never want to overpay, especially in this market. This is a, a buyer's market right now. Right, right, right. So if this deal is presented to you, what would you try to come in at? And oh, if you could. Yeah. Um, how much are they needing in CapEx? They budgeted not like under a million. We think it's closer to one five. Like one point two, yeah. Yeah, I would say about a million to one point two. So and I mean if you're buying it needing stabilization like that, um and you base it on the one point six L NOI, um I mean you could probably you could probably buy it 16 to 18 million range. Bingo. Mm. Yep. That is insane. I, I actually offered them 15. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that was my first. That's, even, that's even better. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a 10 cap. Yeah. That's a 10 cap based on pro forma. That's not a, that's not a real 10 cap, you know? So, um, so you're, I mean, they don't have a one point six million dollar valuation now, right? Right, right. Uh, if their NOI now is nine hundred thousand, and you buy it a ten cap based on that, I mean, that's nine million dollar purchase price. There you go. There's your price. Yeah, but I mean, if you buy it at um, you know, sixteen million, say, or fifteen million, and you put a million and a half, let's say it's two million. And you're at 18 million all in on the property, and it it comes back valued at 23 to 26 in two or three years. I mean, you're you're doing pretty good on it. Right, 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 right. Oh. But if you take bridge debt and the rates keep jumping up, you're going to be underwater. Right. You're saying even at 15 million of an acquisition, I'll still be under. Yeah, you'd be you'd be underwater if the rates jump up to eight or nine percent. I mean, we're uh, at seven. Yeah. We're at seven. So the seven of, range now. The, one of the issues, kind of like we were talking about this yesterday on uh, anyone that was on yesterday's call, um, with and again, it, it just because it is the nature of how deals and how blending is right now. Mm -hmm. You you have so much uncertainty in three years. Let's say that's your window that any little percentage change on the up, you don't have the option to hold out. Like, for example, I have a property, like the 120 unit I've mentioned a few times. We have nine years on the assumable. Yeah, my investors may not like it, but I can find all the alternatives to pay them out. But I'm not forcing my hand in three years because who knows what's going to happen in three years. That's the biggest component of this. Like, obviously, it's the risk reward. How much can you stomach? How many exit strategies do you have? Do you have a backup plan? How else are you going to be able to pay this? Which oh, I, I honestly don't even know the answer to that question. So I'm more asking the question than I am trying to find the answer than I have an answer for. But you, you can leave yourself under. And that's kind of the issue that we think is going to happen coming up now is people not having factored in the... When rates are 3%, everyone thinks it's never going to go... People know it's going to go up, but you never think it's going to triple. And he, here we are not that long after. Jerry, you can attest to this. That turnaround was probably as quick as it fell, it skyrocketed just as fast, if not faster. Right. Now people are caught, uh oh, like, what do you do? That makes sense. 
uh, we actually, I'm not going to name names, but there's some that we all in this community know, and I know for sure, although Jerry and Peter know, that just, I think, foreclosure defaulted on one, if I'm not mistaken. Really? If you guys don't it know. Was taken, it was after. taken back by the bank. They they didn't meet the SCR requirements and was taken back. But, but it, so, so Jerry, kind of, like, elaborate on that. How big of a well, fast way? I was about to say, how, how much debt they have on it? Uh, forty six million or something. They had forty six million in debt on this place, and uh, their debt service went to point nine eight something. And um, the bank it 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 caused an automatic um, automatic foreclosure. So, so, so can you elaborate? That. How much does that rate interest rate shift factor into that equation? Like one or well, two I mean, percent. Yeah, I mean, if you think, um, you know, these are just you know quick numbers, but uh, you know, five hundred thousand dollar mortgage at three percent, you know, might be what twenty five hundred bucks, and at you know at what seven seven percent now, it's probably forty five hundred bucks, you know, mm -hmm. and so when you when you add some zeros behind that, um, you figure that you know an adjustable rate coming up, somebody paying three percent, it jumps to seven. Um, and that kills that kills a lot of cash flow. And then on the same at the same time, um, insurance companies are are really giving it to these apartment owners as well because of uh, you know inflation's killed them. And then we have these storms. So I mean, there's there's a don't I, I've I've said it a hundred times. Don't overpay for an apartment building um, in this market because. Uh, there's going to be some real deals coming on the market, and and um, you know, you're 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 catching a falling sword in a lot of cases right now. If you're if you're paying too much, I was saying 16, mm -hmm. 18 million on this deal. I mean, you're you're catching a catching something that's falling right now. Um, you know, so so buy it buy it a lower price. You know, all right, all right. It's not the time to not the time to. Uh, um, push too hard and you, you gotta, you gotta be real patient. So. Okay. so I wonder how many millions of private capital went up in smoke on that deal. I'd say probably 20 million. Right. Go yeah. on. Yep. Just yeah. vanished in thin air. Man. So, so that was a good little, Again, we can dive into this more, but we kind of have a ballpark of where um, we're kind of landing at this. And I know there wasn't much of the idea of the physical inputting of the underwriting, but this just goes to show like how many times we say, knowing how the lending weather or I guess situation is, knowing what that forecast is looking like, look like getting into the mind of the lender and like reaching out to Jerry and asking these questions and going on their calls on Wednesdays, this is the value you get from making a quick decision where you're not spending so long underwriting something, but you also have the ideas of where do I need to be at? What's the value in this? How, how, because look at me, Jerry, Aldo, Peter, all looked at this deal differently with different set of eyes and all caught something that obviously Jerry came from the investor side. I came, like I had a different look at it. Um, and then we each had our own input. There's no wrong one, but it's just different. You know, like we're all looking mm -hmm. at the factors of the equation so it makes it very interesting and hey um ed i was uh i was with uh grant cardone last thursday and friday um he was on stage and we were looking at deals all day thursday and friday the real estate club was and um he sat up there on stage for an hour and went through his emails and looked at deals in front of everybody and showed us how he looks at deals and he was up there and he must have went through a hundred emails and and underwrote probably five deals just real quick in an hour's time. And he's like, You guys take too long. He said, You take too long looking at these deals. He said, I look at the deal. If I don't like the picture, he said, I I, I throw it out. And he said, I keep going. And he said, he said, you know, what is the rent in that place? If you can't get an OM, you can't get a rent roll. He said, call the property, find out what they rent for. And he said, you know, that that's your average rent. You know, um, you know, take a hundred bucks off of it, two hundred bucks off, depending on what the, the 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 amount is. That's your average rent. Underwrite it there and move on. He, he said, I don't never spend more than ten or fifteen minutes underwriting a deal. 
and then I give it to my team to do the deep stuff. He said, but, but if you don't have a team, he said, give it to your lender to let them do the deep stuff. He said, don't spend all your time uh, with, with every little number and every little thing and, and beating them up over the gutters or the roof or anything else. He said, if you like the deal, get in the deal, put it under contract and do it. He said, if you don't, don't, don't waste any time on it. But I mean, he, he said, he said five minutes, he said of underwriting, you should know if you want the deal or not. Hmm. So, and that's, that's well, all think, part of I think it's five minutes. You, a lot. Yeah. And in five minutes you can determine if, if it's worth diving into. I mean, I don't think you can know yeah. if you're actually going to buy it in five minutes, but you can, in five minutes, you can know if it's, if you're just throwing it to the side or if you're going to dig in deep. Yep. Yep, yep. Right. And obviously on this one, the seller is, is not even close to reality. Right. Uh, do, they so, I mean, on this do they have debt on this one? Say again? Do they have debt on this one? No. No. Uh, oh, okay. Am I sharing my screen? I'm not, right? Okay, cool. No, I think I took it and I think it just disconnected me. Oh, I didn't do anything. No, I I. I think I messed up. That's my bad. Go for it, man. Oh no, I was just wondering if it was because I don't I wasn't sure, but I'm uh, I don't need to right now. So ben, there's no debt at all. Or I know I know there's no I, we didn't think there was any assumable debt, but is it true that there's no debt at all on this deal? Um I'm pretty sure there's not. Uh last time we spoke, I asked a couple of times and they said no. Um, but again, I was going to dive deep tomorrow when I talked to him uh, about the owner financing opportunity. Um, but I, I, I don't, he wasn't speaking like he'd had any. Um, either that or he was just trying to hide it from me. But again, we didn't get to talk in depth. Right. But I did ask a couple of times and he said no. Yeah, I mean... What is what does an exit strategy look on this too, right? Here, yeah, what are those owner financing terms that have to be for this deal to make sense? I mean, right. Like, I guess that's another question. Yeah. Well, again, hold on to that point. Not only the, the the terms of while you're holding it, the terms of how you're getting out of it. So yeah, you'd almost have time. to have something built into this deal where you know. It, depending that's that's based on where the interest rates are when we're trying to exit right mm -hmm. um i mean it you know I, this guy has a well he doesn't have a problem he doesn't know any money on it he's he's fine but he's just not realistic as to what he can sell it for. and right. i'm not going to take the interest rate risk he'd have to take some of that interest rate risk with him. I would venture to say that he's not a real seller if he doesn't owe any money on it right now. Right. In this in this market, I mean, unless he owes somebody somewhere that he's got to get this out of his hands to pay somebody off or right. or something like that's going on, then I mean, he's not a real seller because because you're, you're not going to sell. Yeah, you're not going to sell in this market if if you're. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Since don't Benjamin, uh, I, I don't know how much info you have on this, but apparently they had offers before, discussed with a few sellers, almost up open escrow, but they never got to that point. It's kind of odd to me to have that pull out the time they did. Do you know what ballpark those offers were in that? Yeah, I know the largest one was twenty eight million. I know the one that got the furthest. That's what they were saying was twenty eight million. That's, and that's what kind of piqued my interest also. But of That's course, funny. it didn't close. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. I think you hit yeah. it on the head, Jerry. I don't think this is a real seller at the moment. Yeah, they're fishing for somebody with a lot of money who doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, and I mean, just ask yourself if you if you had a property like this paid off, even if you were having trouble managing it. Are you going to sell it now in this market? Or are you going to wait two years? You know. All right. So I just got some more info. Info. He does have a uh, debt on it. Eighteen point eight million. Ah, I was going to say that yeah, makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, he owes more than it's worth. That's his problem. Yeah, yeah. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. 
So hold on, time out. What are do you know the terms of that loan? Um, so I'm typing it right now. Yeah, he's having cash flow problems now. I don't know how More. he's been affording that payment up to this point, unless it's more likely. Oh, right? Am I missing something there? No, I think he's in trouble. I don't. I don't think you're missing anything. It's probably right. bleeding. Yeah. Let me see. He says he's going to get back to me in just a second. If he, if he doesn't have fixed rate debt, he's really in trouble. If he's got a floating rate, he's he's so upside down, he's bleeding cash. Yeah, he's probably going to end up like the guy you are just speaking of, right? No, it, he's, he's losing this property if that's the case. I mean, he could have a fixed rate debt, and he could be okay. Although, what's, his, what's the occupancy? I didn't, I didn't yeah, catch it. It was yeah. about like 75%, I think. Yeah, his NOI right now is just under a million. 5% P&I payment right now is 1.1 million. Yeah, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's 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 scraping. <laughs> this deal is going to get better and better. That's that blood in the water y'all keep talking about. Yep, that's what it is. There's going to be a lot of these coming to the market and um and and one like this, you're not just the equity just doesn't lose them, the lender's gonna lose too. Oh, definitely. Hmm. And uh it, it's gonna get hard to raise money as well as uh as these news stories start hitting the market too of all the people losing money on these deals too. So you bet. It's gonna be get hard. real hard. Yeah. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to know our stuff and be real convincing and be able to tell the story of why we can do better. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, I think so, also the idea of over-promising and under-delivering, that has to be a factor of it. Um, well, over-promising, I should say, because when things are going great and everyone's over-promising, it's easy to say, um, these are the expectations, the returns, you're going to make so much money. Um, it's all about setting the expectation. I think it comes down to, as well, the timing of when the investment is going to be returned. I think that has to be a big component of it. Like, Hey, I, yes, we have an exit strategy of X, Y, Z. Here are the things that could happen. And here's what we're doing. Make sure that we're not caught in that um, mess, essentially. So my question on this deal is like, what does a parachute look like? So somebody's coming in and somebody's bleeding, bleeding their numbers like this. Like, what do you say to say somebody on something, something like this? Or what is the strategy to say to somebody if you're bringing a solution to the table? The only way to uh, save somebody on something like this would be to get a hold of the lender and deal directly with the lender and work out a deal with the lender because a lender's uh -huh. going to have to lose money for somebody to be able to take it over. Right. This is they're a short sale. sale. Yeah. And they're, and they're going to be looking for somebody that is very experienced. Right. Right. Um, at turning these types of deals around. So finding those connections of of other syndicators and then coming in and taking control of the deal uh -huh. and uh, being able to connect that person with this deal and being their partner is the way to do it. Yeah. Because they're not going to just give it to anybody. The lender's not. Right. They're going to give it to somebody that is 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 has got a big long track record of turning these deals around. Right, right, right. And they're okay. probably going to get the deal for, you know, somewhere between twelve and fifteen million. Uh, from the lender and the lender is going to lose out. So how difficult are those negotiations? Have you guys seen, I've negotiated some short sales, but smaller units to a single family, but other than that, yeah, as time goes, it'll get easier. Mm -hmm. As there's more of them out there, it's going to get easier. I'm seeing a lot of them. I mean, this is just another out of many. Um, a lot of hotels, uh, hotels are really hurting. Um, mm -hmm. you know, five and $10 million. Um, upside down you know they might owe 18 or 20 million and um you know the most we can refi is like 13 or 14 million um you know they're 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 out there all the time i'm seeing yes. one one every other week right now so are you seeing those that do those primarily have floating rate on them yeah bridge debt usually yeah everybody yeah, was getting bridge debt Right. Two that's years ago, everybody was getting bridge debt. Yeah, that's a big story for us raising capital, right? Is that the, the stories you're hearing where people are having problems is they put private capital behind floating rate debt, which is just 
insanity. <laughs> it's insanity when the interest rates are at all time lows, right? That just that never made any sense. That's just that's <sighs> people betting on the market staying great forever. And I mean, rates are at an all time low. If if you can't do the deal with fixed rate debt, that's probably a deal you shouldn't be doing. And right. they thought it would run forever, and they went ahead and did the deal anyway. Yep. And uh, the, these problems, guys, don't don't let these problems uh, discourage you in the market. Uh, it's just it, it's it's what's got to happen. And uh, yep. and just make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble as it's as it's happening. Don't let it happen to you and uh, and, and scoop up some of these deals. Don't assume someone else's problem. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. But yeah, the only way this will sell is um, somebody going and negotiating with the lender directly. It won't sell otherwise if they owe 18 million. Agreed. Hmm. So who else has got questions? Somebody else out there hasn't said anything. He's got to have a question. Don't be afraid to ask it. If you're, if you thought of the question, somebody else has it as well. What you got up there, Kyle? I do have a question. There you go. Uh, so one of the most important, like, I feel like one of the most important numbers is the, uh, the exit cap rate. Um, and I've just been having a hard time to kind of gauge where to, where to come in at for the exit cap. So, I don't know. Go ahead. Who's going to chime in on that one? In this market, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I mean, there was right. things selling at two and three cap rates, you know, a year ago, uh, two years ago. And, and I mean, when you were in the hood, you were selling at five cap rate, you know. Um, and now, I mean, you know, your nicest properties are at a five, six cap rate. So, um, I would say, don't worry about that. And I would say, worry about getting a property that's cash flowing and getting some long-term debt on it and knowing it's going to cash flow for a long time. And over time, real estate's always gone up. It might not go up for a year or two years, but over 10 years, it goes up, mm -hmm. you know, and just, and play it that way. Would you recommend uh, them being prepared to, to be able to hold it for a longer time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just plan on holding for longer. I, I saw a deal work. recently that had a really good rate on it, had an assumable loan, but there was only three years left on the loan. Hmm. It's just too short a period of time. Now you've yeah. got a gun to your head that's 36 months out and it's not worth it, right? You need you need fixed rate debt and lots of time and cash flowing day one. If you've got those three things, you can still buy. If you're missing any one of those three things, I don't think it's a deal. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. That makes a lot of sense. And then um, you know, some I'm seeing, we was at the pitch the bring your deal workshop uh last week and it's just uh, a couple days of guys bringing deals up and pitching them to the group, you know, the real estate club. And just about every deal that comes up on stage, their uh, cash on cash return for their investors, you know, year one, year two is, you know, four, five, six percent. Mm -hmm. and, and remember that you're buying a deal that is on shaky ground already because of the market. And they can get a uh, almost a five percent return on a U.S. Treasury right now, right? You know, and um, I just you know when I see that, I'm not seeing many deals. You know, so and what is, what is Grant saying about a deal like that, Jerry? Is he are well, there any of those deals that make sense to do in his mind? He is buying Class A assets in the nicest locations right. and the nicest properties. Right. And so there's and guys trying there's guys trying to buy 20, 30, 40, 50 year old assets 
and they're trying to buy at six and seven caps. He's buying these huge skyscrapers. He's buying, working on buying one in Chicago right now, the nicest building in the skyline. He's working on buying it, and he's buying it at a five and a half or six cap. Right. You know, right. and his, his, for it. He uh, he said if they need to, they will. Um, they have the cash to buy it, um, but his thing is, you know. If you're going to buy and get that, you know, five, six percent cash on cash, why not buy the nicest assets you can buy that you know are right. going to be stable? Right. You know, don't buy these ones that, you know, two years from now could, uh, you know, it might not be a nice neighborhood anymore, you know, or, you know, something could happen, happen to the property itself that's real expensive to fix. And, you know, it's just buy stable, nice you know, newer properties is what he says is the best mitigating, uh, you know, the best mitigator on that, that risk. Right. Which all leads back to his, uh, Cardone capital is what he's trying to raise on. So <laughs> it right. all works out for him. <laughs> right. So, yeah. well, I think we can still buy some of those, you know, properties that, you know, B and C properties. Right. But the yeah. cap rates just have to be so much higher. That's, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And of course, the buyers, the sellers, are still thinking they're going to get their six, six and a half, and it's just not realistic. Yeah, and they need to be at an eight for it to make use to make sense for you. You know, and, you know, and so that's a story we need to be telling all the time, right? It's like, hey, look, our team is working on a deal in Chicago, <laughs> Class A building, and they're buying it at a five and a half cap. You want me to buy yeah. this building at a six cap? Yeah. Sorry. I got I got a place to put my money in a five and a half cap. I'm not looking for a five and a half cap in the hood. Hundred percent. I'm looking for ten or twelve. Take it or leave yeah. it. You don't like it? Next. Five, like you said, spend five minutes on these deals and then move on. Look at the next yeah. one. And it's okay to throw out LOIs, throw out slow number. I mean, this is the time right now to throw out those low numbers. To start, to start, to get submit those offers, have those conversations. Uh, if they feel stupid low, so what? Yep. You're gonna find us. You're gonna find the right seller eventually that has a reason to continue the dialogue. Yep. Or I mean, you know, go off the numbers of the seller and uh, and then come back after they accept an LOI and say, hey, my lender is uh is not is not able to get this amount of money here. You you said we could borrow this much. We're not right. gonna be able to borrow that much. You know, we need we need a discount. And yep. you've got it under contract at that point, and you can beat them down from there. Um, but uh, you know, you can always always use their lender as well. You know, a lot of these uh, CBRE and all these guys all have their own lenders, and they they they're going to come up with the same numbers that every other lender are going to come up with. They everybody can lend the same amount on them. You know. Yep. So. Good stuff. All right, guys, we got three minutes. Any other questions before we sign off for the night? Offer 10. I could, I could keep firing questions. <laughs> no one else. No one else wants to. So I haven't Come seen on. this, but I haven't seen this napkin underwriter before or underwriting tool before. So I just saw the uh, the rehab, the heavy light, and is it whatever the other mm -hmm. uh, classification is? But do you have like a just kind of a a rough number that that coincides with those um that you go off the, for the napkin yeah right? yeah it's a, it's a rubric so the the nicer and the more that it needs the more expensive it gets um and so so like for a c class you're not going to like you're not going to put that much money even on a heavy to get it you know rentable and 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 nice um you know over the last couple of years people have been doing these value adds and just sprucing sprucing the heck out of a you know c class uh trying to make it an a class so it's if it needs 12 grand it's a unit is because it's jacked up and it's an absolute rehab um which means that the basis should be way way lower um for that so you know that i mean that's that's kind of it's just a standard rubric as an estimate always always lay lay eyes on it um and you know have your, you know, the broker give you an estimate, but always have someone that could go out there and lay eyes on it too and say, uh, you know, this is, this is going to cost you 12, 
15 grand a unit for everything, right? Exterior and interior, whatever. So that you know going in how much money you need to raise. Of course, that's going to affect your um, your returns. So, <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, it's been it's one thing I've been struggling with as well is just sometimes the OM or they don't, maybe not, might, not, might not even have like a, a, a ton of pictures. So it's kind of hard to say sometimes uh, what to really estimate for it. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Google, Google Images helps uh, getting down there on the Google Maps. Um, or so like for us, we we look in, in a market that is close by, like we'll drive an hour you know, or so go look at it, lay eyes on it. If we're interested in it, we're going to go look at it. Um, and then that way we can, we can tell it's, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't, you can't trust the OMs. <clears throat> Not for that anyway. So good question. Great. Awesome. Yeah, thank Sorry. You. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. guys, I had to hit the road, so I was in a bit of a scramble trying to get out. But uh, no, I do man. appreciate everyone participating. This is, this is my favorite type of calls, I'm going to be honest, because it's just, like, fun, engaging, uh, a lot of good value. Thank you, always, as always, Jerry, Peter, for hopping on, Aldo. Excuse me, guys. Um, Real quick, I just wanted to let you all know he does have a fixed rate at 3.25. Just saying. Okay, now we're talking, right. but yeah. now, well, how long is the I.O. period? Uh, 12 years, I think he had on there. I.O. or term? Hold on, let me see. There's got to be a Wait, balloon that... in there. Uh, he just said expires in 12 years. Uh, current loan amount, 80.8, but 3.25 interest. No PPP. Um, let's see. There's a 3.25 loan on it with a 12-year term left. There may be, we may have a different conversation, but yeah, you'd have to dig into that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna dig into I get, it. I guess, I guess the interest only in principal conversation is just out of curiosity. Um, I can't imagine that amount being too much of a difference, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, because at the end of the day, you want to know that number going into it that you're not signing up for something. Another interesting thing, and I think Jerry, I, I don't know, I don't know how much longer we want to go over, but how does a bank feel if the property doesn't requalify or may not look as strong as they thought it would, uh, when an assumable loan is happening? I don't deal on the assumable loan side. You know, I'm a Got broker. It. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't get paid when somebody assumes a loan, <laughs> but uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm usually not in that conversation. Um, you know, but they're going to underwrite the deal like you're buying it the first time. And they're also going to be a problem at, in this situation, to be honest. It, it, it very well could be. Yeah. Very well could be. I'm curious. To see, maybe cash could... flows down. And if it's I'm... a, I'm uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm curious if that could have been a snag on the other deals, or if maybe lenders kind of shunt, like shied away from it, or they wanted something, someone more qualified possibly to take over it. That could be an issue or a hold up too. When a lender starts asking, like, "Hey, yeah, we need X, Y, Z on your REO," when you're trying to assume this loan to show that you could bring this up to potential that the broker and lender are hoping for it to get to, that could be a deal breaker, no matter how good your offer is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, um, you know, like I said, they're going to underwrite it just like, like you're buying it. And, um, you know, if they're, uh, if their occupancy and things is low, which it looks like it is, um, if it's Fannie or Freddie debt, uh, they're going to be calling this loan up anyway, uh, because right. they're not, hitting their, they're not hitting the requirements. Right. Mm. So that, that could be the issue. They're trying to get, get it gone before, before that happens. They don't want to lose it all together. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Just because their rates good doesn't mean they're still not in trouble. Right. Yeah. They're in trouble. They're, they're in they're trouble closed. because of their occupancy for sure. Yeah. They're, they're, they're closed. I mean, good, decent DSCR right now, you and I, but still you got to look at the loan covenants. Yeah. What's the, you can't even get a Fannie or Freddie loan unless you're at 90%, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean there are special long occasions. Ways from that. There's very special occasions where you, you could uh drop below that ninety, but it, it's not real common. So I wonder if it been an assumable situation, um when the rate is so good, is it possible? Like 
obviously you'd have to be a super strong sponsor to pull it off. But if you've got the right sponsor, can you even do an assumable deal when they when the occupancy is that low? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. So obviously we need we need a different skill set for that. But you know, one thing I want to mention too, guys, is for, for those of you guys on here that I don't know if everybody here, I, I know <laughs> Aldo and, and Ed, I know you do. But if you appreciate the value that Jerry brings to this call today, having just spent two days in the room with Grant Cardone, I mean, guys, it costs a lot of money to be in that room. And Jerry's yeah. hopping on this call, it, sharing that experience with us for nothing. I mean, it, it, that is truly amazing. I, I hope you guys appreciate that. And please spread the word. Tell, tell people about what's happening in this community and tell your friends to join us. Um, and, and this is how you're going to find your team. This is how you're going to find your partners. This is how you're going to find other deals to work on, right? Like like this deal that, that Ben brought to us that we can all dig into and learn from. So this has been awesome. Appreciate you bringing it, Ben. And yeah, Jerry, I appreciate thanks, you guys. Thanks for man. hopping on. Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys as always. And uh, our special guests, Jerry and Pete, thanks for coming out. This has been uh, this has been great. And thank you, uh, Ed, for getting this started and get it going. Such a good uh, such a good Zoom tonight. Thank you, guys. And we'll see. Yeah, you guys thank you, guys. All right. Take care, you. guys. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See you next time.